our Saturday night live stream. I hope everybody out there is doing well. And I most importantly hope you guys can see me. So I've got that my health is good, so I'm assuming someone out there can see me. Yay! Hey Kim, how are you? <sighs> Day surgery this week. What's up, Daryl? What bits did you get chopped? Hey Roslyn. Hey Lisa, good to see you, love. Okay. Hey Cheryl and Shirley and Kate and Jenny, um, Susie. Hey Kerry, good, great. All right, YouTube's sort of saying it's not so great, but still all good. Here, still so. all good. Excellent. One minute, I've lost the chat window. Hey Deb. Hey Carol, it's really good to see you too. Hey Silver and Dawn, you can hear me, great. Makes it easier when you can hear me. Hey Kate. All right, fabulous. Lots of people here to see. That's good. I'm just gonna, just gonna take my bracelet off. It keeps making noises, so I drag it across the deck table. Okay, fabulous. All right, well, we're doing Tiffany Cuff tonight, which is um, a sheeted elf weave, basically. So um, it's a bit of a full-on weave, and. Um, Got the cyst taken off my head. <laughs> All right, I could be really nasty about that, but I won't. I hey, I Karen, be. good from good to see you from the UK. All right, so as I said, Tiffany Cuff um, elf weave elf weave sheet variation. Um, I'll swip, swap this over to the other camera, and we'll make a bit of a start on this because I've got a few things to talk about at the end of of the demo. So I'll just swap you over. All right, now I've only got a couple of pieces made up, uh, one in 16 gauge and one in 18 gauge. I didn't get around to doing a 20 gauge version because quite frankly, there's only so much of my sanity that is left. So this is 16 gauge AWG, which is 1.2 millimeter diameter wire. And I'll get my McStabby. And this is done with uh, 730 seconds of an inch or 5.56 millimeter ID. Um, I've created the project so that it's a double sided project. So you've got one color on one side, one on the other. Hey, Bergen, good to see you. And uh, 730 seconds or 5.56 is not the ideal size for this weave. Ideally, you want around about a 5.25, so a little bit smaller than this, but it's the only size that I've got that's close in anodized aluminium that we could do this weave with. So it still looks great and it's easy to weave up, but it is slightly larger than ideal. So this is the 18 gauge version or one millimeter wire diameter. And this one's using 4.5 millimeter ID, which is closer to uh, the ideal size. You can see that it's just a little bit tighter in the construction. And then of course, if you want to do 20 gauge, if you're insane, uh, 3.75 millimeters is what you would need for a 20 gauge uh, version. Like I said, though, I didn't get the 20 gauge done. I just simply ran out of time. Um, it would be hugely time consuming to do it in 20 gauge. All right, so I'm going to be um, demonstrating it tonight in the 16 gauge. And it's very popular, everyone's liking it, this, this one. Okay, cool. <laughs> now, um, what you need to do to start this up is to create three strips of elf weave. Um, or however many strips long you're going to wide you're going to make it the kit that went out to the mail club um, is three strands wide now to make up elf weave <laughs> well one of us has got to be crazy right Mars will be you love <laughs> all right so we're going to make up elf weave and to do that we start by making a simple one 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 chain with our uh, BA rings Okay, and you want this to be approximately three times the finish length that your cuff will be. It really gets scooched up quite a lot. 
So you make it about three times the length that you want your cuff to be and you put your colour uh, two ring in the middle. So I'm just going to add a couple more rings on this. I've only got some short sample pieces um, to do so I'll just finish doing that off. So just make up a simple chain. You can add to this as you go along but it is a little bit easier if you've got you know the close to the correct length from the beginning. I'm just going to add one more to my chain. Okay. So about three times the length, fold it in half, swap out the middle ring for the lighter colour in this case, which is your coloured two ring, if you're following the tutorial. Okay. Hey, Brissy, good to see you. Who else has turned up? Oh, we've had a few. Julie. Julie. Oh, lots Linda. of people. Sorry, guys, um, if I've missed you. All right. So to make elf weave, put a twist tie in the end of your colour two ring, your light ring there. And we're going to be working with this pair of rings and the next pair of rings. And we want to position this so that pair number two sits inside of pair number one. Okay, just like that. And we want to place our ring through the eye here that's formed where all those four rings interlock. Okay, that's where our first ring is going to go. So using a colour one ring, okay, your dark, dark colour. We go through all those four rings. Make sure you pick the four of them up. Okay, you can see I've gone through the four. And close your ring up. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to flip our work over to the other side. And then pair number two becomes pair number one. And they go on the outside. And our new pair becomes pair number two. And they sit on the inside. And then we take up our other colour, our lighter colour ring. And we put it through those four rings again like we did, making sure you pick all four of them up, close your ring up, flip your work over and do the same again. So the second pair of rings becomes the first pair, your new pair of rings becomes the second pair so they sit inside. Keep an eye on what colour you're up to, we're up to a dark colour and we feed that dark colour ring through all four of those rings there that are where they interlap or overlap I should say intersect close that up so you keep doing this for the length of the bracelet swapping the sides over making sure that the rings that were just on the inside are now on the outside and the new set of rings are on the inside Keeping an eye on what colour you're on and taking up one of those rings, feeding it through the four, okay, straight through the eye there, picking up all four rings and closing that up. Okay, so just flip and repeat all the way to the end of your chain. So I'll just quickly go through and do that now on this piece. Okay, flipping it over, 
feeding it through all four of those rings. Making sure that second pair sits inside the first pair. Going through, picking them all up. Okay, flipping it back. Going through all four rings. Okay, nearly there. It's really fiddly towards the end. Oh, you get lots of practice with Elf Weave with this one, Leanne, for sure. Okay, and now just one more. And we're done. Okay. So that's basically Elf Weave. And as you know, Elf Weave is not, or those that have watched me before, know that Elf Weave is not a stable weave. So although it's supposed to look like this, and this is a lot l lacier than you would normally do Elf Weave, this is not an ideal size to do Elf Weave in, but it has to be a little bit lacier in order to sheet them, to join them. So Elf Weave, this is what it looks like when it's all laid out flat. But the moment you pick it up, it all starts to fold back in on itself again. So Elf Weave by itself is not stable, which is why there's so many different Elf Weave variations, um, different rings to add it in there to try and keep it flat. Now the final thing to do once you've made up your Elf Weave sheet, or your Elf Weave chain, I should say, sorry, we want this one to actually sit a little bit differently our first ring so what I'm going to do I remove the twist tie and I'm just going to flip that ring over so it sits like this now so it was like this and I just want to flip that now so that it spreads those first two rings open and I'm going to put my twist tie back through the first ring there okay so you need to make three of these, or you need to make at least two to start with so that you can join them. Once you've made up a couple of them, you want to position them so that you've got the same colour rings on each side. So what I do then is I just come back with, I just take my twist ties that are on the beginning and twist them together so that it keeps them together like that. It doesn't matter which side you start with, whether you start with the darker side or this side over here, it doesn't really matter. But what we want to do is we want to join these two rows. Now we're going to join them with uh, the dark rings, but again you could add any colour in here that you want, it's totally up to you. We're going to go, our ring is going to go through the first AA ring and it's going to come down and pick up the two BA rings. So it goes through this AA ring that's lying flat and it comes down and it picks up the two BA rings that form sort of like this wing that sits on the outside. And then we bring our work around, we swing it around and we come up through the AA rings on the other piece and up through the corresponding, sorry, up through the BA rings and up through the AA rings there. 
Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like. And what I might do just so it's a little bit easier to see where this ring is going, I'm actually going to use the light color ring. Okay. Normally I would put the dark color ring in there, but just to show you that contrast, I'm going to put the light color ring in. So we bring it down through the first uh, flat lying ring here, the first AA ring. And we go through that, we pick up that, we pick up the two ring, uh, BA rings, I'm getting myself all confused here, BA rings that fir, uh, form up the wing. We bring our work around, it swings around, picks up the wings on that side. Except I've got it up one too far. Pick up the wings that are there and then pick up the AA ring. And then we close that up. Okay. So you can see how that ring has come through the AA through the AA, through the BA, the two BAs, through the two BAs over here, and up through the AA there. Now, because this one's not so tight, it's easy to just work straight down one side, flip it over, work down the other side. If it's a little bit tighter, um, and it's also a little bit easier to see to work on opposite sides. So you would flip over to the other side, and you would go to your first anodized ring, your first flat ring, which is this one actually up here. And you would go through that one, through the next two silver rings in your weave, swing your work around, pick up the next two silver rings. Wait a minute. A bit floppy there we go so AA BA BA AA and close it up okay so there's the first ring on that side placed And I'm just going to go down and do the next one. So we go down through the next flat AA ring, the next one in the, the sequence, through the BA rings that are below, swinging our work around. It just naturally goes into the next set of BA rings and up through the AA rings. Okay, and then you can flip your work over. We go down to the next loose AA. Through the BA rings swing your work around through the BA up through the AA and close so you can see that it's stitching those two pieces together <laughs> all right flip it over to the other side Go to the first flat ring, first middle ring that hasn't already got something through it. Go straight through it, through the set of wings that are directly underneath it. Swing the work around. Come up through the set of wings and up through the flat middle ring. Okay. So you would do that all the way to the end. 
but you can see it starts scooching it up quite quickly. Okay, down through the flat ring, through the wings there on the side, up through the wings on the other piece, up through the AA. And that's basically it. So once you've stitched them all together, you continue um, adding your pieces of elf weave depending on how wide you want it to be. Now, does that make sense to everybody? Have I gone too fast or bored, the, bored you to tears? Uh, no, I don't think you bored you to tears. Okay. It's looking very good. Something here is sitting a little bit funny. I've done something a bit strange here, but I'll have to come back and have a look at it. It's not sitting quite right. So once you go all to the end, you then just grab your next prepared piece. Okay, make sure that it sits the same way. So I just unravel the, you know, the two that I've just had together and then I twist my new one onto it and then basically you do the same thing. So on this side this time I go down through the anodized ring, through the wings underneath it, picking up the wings on the other side and the anodized ring. Close it up. Okay. Flip your work over. And then we're going to do the same on this side. We go down through our first anodized ring, through the first lot of wings there on the side, through the wings, oops, I've gone through the wrong spot, through the wings and through the AA ring. Close it up. Okay. Once more on this side. Okay, go down to the anodized ring in the middle, the next one in the, the row, pick it up, pick up the two rings that form that sort of wing, that V look on the outside, flip your work around, pick up the next two wings and the next uh, ring in the middle, close it up. Sorry if I keep bopping you in the face with my pliers. What are we giving out? Who's having what? Uh, Brizzy Girl's giving out um, cookies Ooh, or brownies. Brownies. <clears throat> oh, yum. I'll have a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, through the middle ring, through the wings there on the side, through the wings, same position on the other side and up. Okay, so is everybody good with that? Hopefully you all understood my instructions. I think so. Most people have been saying good things. Daryl was um, impressed with you he not tongue-tied. <laughs> the rings and wings. Oh, rings and wings and I things. Guess, uh, I am too. Rings and wings and things. That could be our business. That's what we should have called it. <laughs> rings and wings and things. No, I think there's already a rings and things or something like that. Okay. And that's basically it, guys. So you can make that um, as wide as you want. You add as many pieces of elf weave on there as you like. <laughs> I'm not sure wine would be a good idea, Kylie. <laughs> Might create an interesting uh, variation. 
and that's it. So as I said, I, the colours I designed was for it to be, I don't know what I've done there, was for it to be a two-sided bracelet. I've just put this different colours in there so you guys can see those joins a little bit easier. Okay. All right, well, if everybody's good with that, I will swap it over. Well, it's um, it's a little fiddly, but once you start getting into um, a routine, uh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Sylvia's got a question there. What was it? If you're working, so if you work on one color per side, then the color changes per side. Hmm. Did she mean you swap colors? You swap sides. Yeah, so when we made Elf Weave, we had one colour ring running down one side and the other colour ring running down the other side of Elf Weave. So when you flatten that out, one side is dark and one side is light. And then when you join them together, you just choose you just use the same um, colour to join them. Uh, the clasp I used, um, Lisa, was just a four-point attachment slide lock clasp. Um, and then I just took some smaller rings and fed it through the last few there that you can see. Nothing fancy. So yes, it's it's reversible if you stick to the colours all being on one side. So you can see this has got the lavender pink. This has got the dark rose. So as long as you put the dark... This one here, you can see, because it was my test piece, I actually used uh, BA to join up because I was trying to save some of my AA but with the kit that went out you guys all got AA to join up um, I got another piece floating around somewhere and of course I've lost it here it goes um, so you can see here that all the flats are red and all the uh, V's, all the wings, are BA. And then on the other side, all the flats are black. And all the wings are BA. Okay. Cool bananas. All right, so hopefully you're fine with that. If you have any issues, let me know in Aussie Mailers. Um, and we'll see if we can help you out. It does scooch it up quite a lot, Ace. I was surprised because it's at that size, the elf weave is really loose, and um, but it tightens up really nice. And if you go down just a smidgen, it's it's nicer again. But um, you do have to have um, the right size, and it's only going to be BA. I don't know about the sides, Ray. To be honest. Um, I mean, it's elf weave. It's it's loose. Maybe you could use one of the techniques to tighten up the side. Um, put an extra ring in there. Um, I'm just trying to think what it is. Maybe a spinal elf or something like that to just tighten up those side rings. That would be um, something to look into. I'll have to have a look at that and see. Um, what adding extra rings but you'd have to add extra rings in there to um, to tighten that up because as you know elf weave just wants to fold in on itself it's lazy we should call it deb weave <laughs> yeah I'm gonna have to try the 20 gauge myself ace but um, you know sometime when I don't have quite so much to do I think all right I just want to um, cover a couple of things while I've got you guys here um, so 
as far as Malcon, because I know everybody's interested in Malcon, we had hoped to have the website done by the end of this weekend. We're not going to quite make it. And part of that is my fault. I haven't finished finalising all the pieces that um, I will be teaching. But we should have it by midweek to have it open for registrations by midweek. Uh, for those that purchased uh, Hyperlinks kits, part of the pre-order, if you haven't seen, uh, they're on their way to me now and I'm really hoping I should have them very early next week. So they'll be going out to you guys uh, by the middle of the week again. Mail Club, the August kits are due to go out on Monday. So we, uh, I've got all of that together, just getting it ready to send out to you guys. Um, so that's Monday. I just want to mention, because I have had a couple of questions about the price uh, rise that we were talking about. Anybody that was a, that is currently a member who didn't cancel their membership this month, you guys don't incur the price rise, okay? You guys have got the price that you signed up for for the rest of your subscription life with us. If you cancel the subscription and come back and re-sign, then it will be at the new price. But anybody that's a current member does not have to worry about the price rise. It does not affect you guys. You get it at the um, price you signed up for. Uh, so Mail Club is currently closed for registrations. That won't open up again until uh, the 1st of August. Am I getting my months right here? For September kits. And that'll be our first month at the new price. Our back order uh, catalogue subscription um, is open anytime. It won't close down, so it doesn't matter what time of the month you sign up for that. So if you're interested in the back order, you don't have to worry about whether or not that's open or closed like we do with Mail Club. Thank you to those that have signed up for the back order. Um, we really do appreciate it. It's good to see so many people taking it on. And um, sorry, the young lady's popped in for a visit. I'm just watching what she's doing. And the other thing I want to talk to you guys about, I don't know if anybody has seen it, but the bead and buy in Sydney in September, we've been asked to exhibit there and we've said yes. So that's in September. It's uh, the weekend of the 22nd and the 23rd at East Ride. Um, we will start sending out information about this and, and posting and everything. But uh, we will be there for that day. We're bringing just kits and tools. But, you know, if you guys want to pop along and um, come along and see us and have a chat, it's quite a laid back um, craft show. It's, it's not, there's only, um, I think there's only about five or six exhibitors there. Um, we're happy to be asked to come along and exhibit with them. Yeah, I'm not going to the Melbourne One Ray. I was not asked to go to Melbourne and I wouldn't go to Melbourne anyway. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's too hard for us to get to Melbourne. We loved it that one time we came down. We really, really did. And I wish we could come back again to Melbourne. But it is such a big um, a big trip for us. And, um, to, take, we, to take everything with us. To take everything with us. Um, it's, it's just huge. So, yeah, beaten by... It's 22nd, 23rd, East Ride Scouts Hall, but we will um, be putting information up and possibly sending some flyers out and everything as that gets close. But I just wanted to let you guys know, um, I did look that up, Chris. That's a week four. We may not go live that week, I'm thinking. Okay, we'll work it out as time gets. I mean, it's a, it's a live chat session, so mm -hmm. it shouldn't upset, and it's a five-week month, five-Saturday month, so... <laughs> send you a stash <laughs> you know actually Ray that's not a bad idea <laughs> yeah. options, options. we need to talk <laughs> all right so that's all my um bits and bobs I don't think I've missed anything have I oh um don't forget the tutorial coming out on Tuesday uh, where are you Swap that over. So this is the Tuesday's tutorial, this little earring. So that's coming out Tuesday morning, 7 o'clock. 
Don't forget to check that out, guys. And as someone pointed out, we're up to 995 subscribers on YouTube. The magic number is a thousand <laughs> and above. So if you haven't already, so if you haven't already subscribed, please, please. make my day <laughs> because I refresh the page several times a day to see if anybody's subscribed. <laughs> um, or if you know somebody who would like to subscribe and they haven't already, ask them very, very nicely if they could. <laughs> and then we can earn, you know, a couple of cents. <laughs> Oh, um, and I'm up to row eight on my. Page. On your square, Chris wants you guys to know he's up to row eight. He's been working very. Actually, Chris has been working very hard this week. He's done an absolutely fabulous job on the Malcolm website. I can't wait for you guys to see it. It's flashier than anything we've done in the past. <laughs> <laughs> he's done a, a really good job on it. So once I get a couple of more details ironed out um, for myself and with some of the demonstrations and things that we're doing. I've got to get a couple of more images together. We will get that website up for you. Um, and I can't wait for you guys to see it. He's done a fabulous job. So, uh, yeah. All right. Do a live chat at the Bead and Bite. We probably will, Ray. Um, I mean, I don't know what the Bead and Bite is like. I imagine it's going to be... You want me to show it off? Silver wants to see it. I imagine it's going to be a lot... <laughs> more so low I'm key just... than the bead show used to be but um i'm you know i'm looking forward to being able to kick that all right so this is chris's work so far guys so you can see the dove yeah <laughs> oh yeah you've got to have the vision <laughs> you can see the dove imagine the dove <laughs> oh thank you brucey that's lovely thank you more the merrier <laughs> so he's doing really well but right? keep in mind that he's not a mailer he's made two bracelets is that right one two yes two bracelets in the whole time um we've run aussie mail so he's doing very very well and i have to say he uh, is a much uh, more subdued mailer than i am <laughs> there's no swear words or anything coming from over there What happened, Janine? Practice my first ever chain mailing last night. Saw in daylight today. Oh, look, it takes a while to get uh, joins and things going, and I can't do it now without magnification. I try not to. Um... Oh, yeah, no shame in uh, magnification in glasses. Sorry, the cats are going off. All right, lovely people. Oh, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. I'm still blown out that you guys from the States pop along and see us. It's such a ridiculous hour of the morning. Yeah, we've got a few crazy people. And I am there. very honoured that you wake up to spend some time with me. <laughs> I really do. Yeah, I'm expecting it to be low-key, Lorraine. Um, that's the expectation level that Prue and um, Joe has set for me. I know Kim, right? <laughs> I don't know how he does it. I sat there today watching him thinking I'll count how many times he swears and he didn't, not once, not once. Didn't even get cranky or sigh or <laughs> it's really quite unnerving. <laughs> I like to, uh, you know, tell the rings exactly what I think of them. <laughs> All right. Don't want to miss it. Well, thank you, Lisa. I am just thrilled that you guys um, pop in. And, and Cynthia, yeah. you're, you're another crazy, crazy one. Oh, no, sleeping on the couch. No. Yeah, that's why. No, as I said, you guys, I'm, I'm just, you know, blown away that you come at such a time in the morning to, to catch up with us all. All right. Is there anything that I can, um, anything else that anybody needs me to talk about? See how he goes with Tiffany? Oh, I wouldn't do that to him, Dev. <laughs> 2.43 in Oregon. Oh, Cynthia, hun, go to bed. Sweetie, that's way too late to be up. <laughs> All right, Dawn, thank you so much for joining in, in, sweetheart. Catch up with you soon. Okay. So I think that's it.
Excellent. I think everyone's enjoyed it tonight. It's a very lovely way. Bottle sand would disappear. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I don't know how he's doing it, to be honest. Maybe he's, maybe he's got a drink somewhere I can't see or something. Oh. I don't know. All right. Good night, Leanne. Thanks for coming along, hun. I'm a good teacher. <laughs> if you'd learned anything from me, it would have been all swearing. <laughs> Malcon side up. Um, no, not yet, Brizzy. You must have missed all that. <laughs> It'll be up for registrations at uh, by the middle of the week. So I've got one or two things to work on um, and then to finalise and Chris will be able to put it up for us. So the majority of the work is done. It's actually me that's um, dragging it a little bit at the moment. Um, I've been busy this week um, putting the mail club kits together. So I haven't been able to spend as much time on mail con as I would have liked. The middle of the week, it'll be Chris whipping me now. Instead of mm -hmm. me whipping here, telling My you turn. what to do. Yeah. All right, beautiful people. Well, we might call it quits then since we're all done. I hope you enjoyed the weave. I'd love to see what you guys do with it on Aussie Mailers through the week if you get a chance to uh, finish it up. And um, I guess I'll catch up with you then. Uh, next week is our chat week. Yes, have I got that right? Yeah. So we'll just do a chat. If you've got anything you want me to cover, let me know through the week, guys. And we will also have our prize giveaway. Um, so that's next week. All right, beautiful people, I will let you go and um, catch, us up with, catch up with you through the week on Aussie Mailers. Okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs>